What's going on, Assassins? It's Dark Strider, and if you've been following the news on Ubisoft, there's a lot of kind of pushback and rumor when it comes to Ubisoft saying that they want you to become comfortable with not owning your games. So basically what's going on is that they have the service that they've got on PC, and basically you don't buy Ubisoft games anymore. That's what they want to kind of like focus on. But this isn't going into effect immediately, okay? I'm just letting you know that right now. That's not what's happening. But they do have a service. It's kind of like Game Pass and stuff like that, the EA system, but it's only for Ubisoft's games entirely. And what they want you to do is pay $17.99 per month, and you're able to stream basically like any Ubisoft game. Uh, you know, they've got like a classics collection, they've got like a current collection and stuff like that. Uh, you cannot buy Assassin's Creed Mirage on Steam right now, but you can play it online through their service. And I do believe Epic Games also has it where you could uh, purchase it there. But what they want to do, and this is kind of like a new kind of trend that we're seeing, they want you to pay this subscription service and give you access to all the games, not unlike Game Pass, but you're basically renting the games. They're flat out saying it, you know. I know that, and I'm not trying to start a console war between Xbox and Sony ponies. Please don't do that here. Uh, you know, but I will bring into it that there are a lot of people who are pro PlayStation that believe that Game Pass is just a waste, that Game Pass is, you know, uh, it allows people on Microsoft to play the games and they don't actually own them. They could complete games and everything like that. Uh, a lot of the games are like day one on Game Pass. We've seen a lot of the games that were shown at the uh, Xbox Direct, the Microsoft Direct, that they are going to be day one on Game Pass. So it kind of defeats the purpose of actually buying the physical media. Now, there are plenty of arguments for and against the physical media. Number one, physical media takes up a lot of space. You know, you go out, you make the purchase of a game, and you're paying 60, 70, 50 bucks, depending on what the game is, the length and everything like that. Same thing with the DLCs. You end up paying a couple of bucks for the DLCs and whatnot. And it just, you know, it, it could get pricey. So they're saying kind of like a Netflix or Disney Plus, HBO Max. You pay a certain amount per month and you are able to access the game until you are no longer able to access the game. So with physical media, you can access your game, you know, anytime you want. You're feeling nostalgic. You know, I own freaking every single uh, uh, system known to man. They, I, I've got an original working Pong. I have a freaking old, old, old TV just so that I could play that. And, um, you know, anytime I want to play, like, let's say, Nintendo, I just pop the tape in there, the cassette, and I'm good to go. I start playing my Nintendo game. It has all my progress. If the battery gets old and outdated, I could replace the battery. I know how to do that myself. So I'll just replace the battery and, you know, I'll go about my business. I'll continue to play the game. Uh, that's the beauty of owning it. You know, plus, you know, when I die in a hundred years, my, you know, children, great grandchildren, great great grandchildren could sell all that stuff off to nostalgia nerds and just, you know, be millionaires. You know, so it, it, that's you know, kind of like the benefits of it. You know, plus it's it's kind of cool, you know, to like walk in and just see like how your collection has grown and stuff like that. I've got racks upon racks of like every system. D you know the the DVD cases from uh, you know the the PS3 days, the Xbox 360 days. Those cases. I've got you know the cartridges from 
Atari 2600, the original NES, Super Nintendo. I have the boxes for, you know, all these things. And, and you know, I just, it, I personally enjoy it. I like having it. Same thing with movies. I like having movies and just watching them anytime I want without the need for subscription services, especially when, you know, sometimes they just don't have anything new. They're playing the same old outdated things, you know. Now, with that, though, comes rotations so now if you have game pass or if you don't know how game pass works you pay per month and then they have x amount of games i have game pass on my pc and there's more games on the pc versions than there are on the uh you know the the actual xbox i've got access to tons of more games and the thing is that you know sometimes i'll not get to a game i won't be able to get to it and unfortunately i miss out it gets rotated out sometimes uh you know if the game doesn't really do well but you enjoyed it it might get rotated out all right and they don't really tell you when this is going to get rotated out but they do tell you when a brand new game is going to come in you know so that's kind of wild now you know again no console warring, but there are people who say that, you know, that's just a crappy method because, you know, you're not giving money to the publisher. Uh, Larian Studios has made it very clear, the makers of Baldur's Gate 3, they made it very clear that they will not put any of their games on Game Pass or PlayStation Plus. All right. You will not be getting these any Larian games ever for free. Uh, you will not be getting them you know like timed on on game pass or uh you know the playstation uh plus so you know they they feel that you know they put in the work they deserve the money you know i don't know how it works for publishers like i don't know how publishers make money off of this um you know phil spencer has said that people play on game pass and then they go out and buy the games i haven't seen statistics for that but it is pretty good for like game preservation it's kind of like on playstation plus i have access to a lot of the old resident evil games from the ps1 era and i like that you know i'm able to play those old games uh, i do own a ton of games on steam i have a ton of physical copies i do have a ton of digital copies for all systems and you know like i i play through them regularly and whatnot but uh the only thing that worries me about like game pass and stuff like that is that they'll rotate the game out and you will no longer have access to it so that's kind of the concern with what's going on with ubisoft's new tactic now I don't know that it's a bad tactic, honestly, paying, you know, like, let's say $20 when all is said and done uh, for the service and having access to the games is kind of cool. I mean, the money is obviously going directly to Ubisoft and they have their games at the ready for you to play, but again, the rotation problem comes into effect like what happens when they rotate that game out or those games out then what happens you know it's it's kind of like a i don't know it, it does it save all your data is your data saved to your hard drive so that, that way if the game comes back you're able to play it i know a lot of people i've seen on twitter are kind of angry and they're talking about pirating games i i don't condone that you know like i i pirating actually hurts them a lot more than you know like it, buying it or having a subscription service but you know people are on the fence with this a lot of people are against it a lot of people you know would rather have access to it anytime that they want uh you know like if you have like a uh, external hard drives for any of your consoles or if you have you know like the internal hard drives you put in like a, a large tetrabyte you know drive in there you can hold a ton of games you could hold a ton of data you know 
I, I don't know how I'd feel if I was in the middle of a game and then I came back and the game is just gone and I'm unable to play it. Or if I'm feeling nostalgic, I have no access to it. I don't know. But the way that this is sounding, you know, it's just going to be like a Game Pass style model. And I, again, I don't know that that's a bad thing. But let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think that this is bad paying, you know, like $20 a month for this kind of subscription service. Keep in mind that they lock you in and we've seen they raise prices on these subscription services. Do you prefer digital media or do you prefer physical media? And what kind of gamer are you? Are you somebody who collects, you know, all the collectibles and the actual cases or not? You just collect it digitally. Anyway, that's all there is for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure you like and subscribe. It helps this channel out an awful lot. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And until next time, take care, be good, stay safe, take care of each other. I'll see you soon.